first off, thank you everyone so much for coming to our very first Ask the Experts series. Um, if you haven't heard of Connect by Nova yet, we're a new social enterprise that just launched in Cayman, completely focused on helping individuals achieve career success. So with career coaching, training, doing sessions like, like these um, to help the community learn more information about the di different industries in Cayman, we're super excited to have Laurent Su and Yasmani here to talk about software development and programming. So on to them to introduce themselves. Thanks so much, everyone, for coming. All right. Thank you for organizing this. Um, yeah, just want to mention that this is the first time we do this, and we're very excited to share what we know because we didn't have a lot of opportunity so far to talk about tech to people that are outside of this space on the island. My name is Lorenzo. I come from Romania. Uh, I come from a very small town in Romania, a very poor country, uh, and the poorest part of that country. Uh, I was the first in my family to go study computer science, uh, and I think that helped me uh, both career-wise and in life, and it is how I managed to arrive here. Uh, it's a similar story for many of my uh, friends in Romania that studied computer science, and I think uh, yeah, computer science is something that can help anyone have a great career and have a great life. I will pass it on to Yasmani. Hi, I am Yasmani. I am from Cuba. Uh, currently, I am doing software engineer here in Cayman Island. <clears throat> so my path, I am very happy to get inside of tech here in Cayman Island because I came from Cuba. Cuba is a poor country also. And here in Cayman Island, the opportunities to become a software engineer are growing too much. So the, the first question that I did, I remember when I was in the school, I was in the high school. Somebody came to me and asked me, hey, how the school is doing? And I say, yeah, very nice. I am very interested in solving mathematical problems. I like when the teacher put a problem that I need to extract variables and my solution with equations. And also I like too much geometry because in my mind, I, in my mind, I can imagine the, the, the shape of the thing that are happening and I can find relation with it then. And my friend told me, man, you should ask what is computer science because I already, I am doing a degree in computer science and I will come a software engineer. So that is the way that my path starts. I did five years in Cuba about the studying about computer science. And computer science is about solving problems. After that, when I finished my degree, I came to Cayman Island because I saw on the internet that here in Cayman Island, there are many opportunities with very nice salaries. And I took this decision to go to Cayman Island. When I came to Cayman Island, it was very hard for me because I didn't know English. I didn't know English. I just came here with $20 and computer science. and I remember that I was rejected for all the companies that do recruiting here because I couldn't speak with them about computers. Um, my first opportunity that I have, that I had here to talk about computer science was, was when I met Laurentiu. Laurentiu brought me through a lag here and said, man, I saw your profile. I think that we can chat in order to, in order to see if you are a good fit for us. Laurentio at that time didn't know that I couldn't speak English. And I came only with computer science. In my interview was very, very tricky because I didn't know English and my current profession is about Cebrus programming. I didn't have a skill in Cebrus programming. But the way that Laurentio tells me, Laurentio said, man, you don't need to be worried. Computer science is not about how that you speak English. Computer science general science that is common in every country. At that point, he started to do many questions about me, about my personality, and I started to dry my, my skin. After that, he told me, we don't know, I am sure that he was thinking that, we don't know if you will be able to work with us. We are going to give you three months of tests. If after three months of tests, 
you can work with, with, with us. You can improve your English. You can get the skin in computer science in several two languages. You will be fully working with us. And now I have been working with the company one year and a half. So in the company, I learned a new language, several plus. I learned a lot of English. I couldn't in two years here in AT company, I couldn't improve very fast. I couldn't learn very fast a new language, English, because the people that are working in this, in AT usually are very nice. They don't care how did you lie. They, they only, that we care is about what do you know about computer science? And so in my position about computer science, I have uh, my role is several proof development. What I do here in my position, I do coding in order to tell to the computer how it should perform. I think that software engineer will be the most wanted position looking around the world. Science that computer and a human being are living very close. When we are thinking, when we are thinking about computer, the people say, the people think usually about classic desktop or laptops, but computer are everywhere. I am sure that now we have fully used computer. A phone is a smart computer that was developed by people with knowledge in software engineering. A desk is a smart computer right now. Even we have shoes now that are in smart computer that they should change the code or do things. And the amazing thing about that is that all the things that you can imagine now in the back, there is a computer science telling to that thing how the computer science, how it should perform. So computer science uh, has a very long history. At the beginning work, very big machine. I was very difficult to the people to get in touch with that. But now the computer are very small. There are many computers in everywhere and it's easy for us to program it. So if you want to do a software engineering, you will need to spend many hours programming computer. Thank you, Yasmani. And I would like to go back a bit and talk about when we hired Yasmani. At the time, we were looking for a C++ software engineer for almost a year. And it was very tricky to find because it's a specialty profession and we were looking on island through all the channels that we could all the recruiting companies and we we're also looking globally trying to get someone to relocate here and then i stumbled on uh, yasmani on linkedin and i saw his profile and his his story on the profile inspired me already because i saw he came from cuba uh, he had a remote job there and when we chatted with him like everyone that chatted with him in the company was very impressed with him uh, one because he didn't really speak english and the few words that he did speak he was telling us an amazing story of how he came here and how he was hungry to learn, hungry to work. And then, yeah, we gave him a test and it turned out to be one of the most amazing uh, employees that we have in terms of work ethic, in terms of uh, attitude that he has. Uh, he's very humble and it has worked great for us. And as he said, like he didn't know English and he didn't know C++. He learned all of that in three months and he got up to speed. And now he's on par with the best software engineers that we have in the company. Um, a bit about me and what I do. I'm a product manager. So I try to simplify it as much as I could um, for any of the software applications that we build in our team. Uh, I set the direction of where we want to move forward in terms of features, in terms of what we uh, want to target. I look at the competition to see what is there. I, I look at the target audience. I look at the market. Uh, and then uh, I plan, I discuss with the development team. Uh, I organize uh, a timeline. I prioritize features. Uh, but at the end of the day, what both me and Yasmani do and what I put here in the presentation is that we problem solve. I think that is the most important skill that you can have working in tech because everything changes all the time. Everything um, is new. Uh, it's a very dynamic place to work in. 
and that makes it very interesting because there's always something new that we can learn and there's always things that pop up challenges or issues uh, and you need to be adaptable and you need to solve problems all the time okay uh, stepping back a little bit uh, i wanted to touch on this because maybe it has not been seen like this in cayman yet but globally over the past few decades tech has become the most important sector uh, in the world and i put here a nice pie chart that is based on the market uh, the stock market from the united states from 2020 and uh, the market capitalization which basically means the value of each of these companies based on the stock and the share price and as you can see uh, 50 percent of all the companies in the united states uh, or 50 percent of the market capitalization in the united states is represented only by five big tech companies apple you know them they make iphones they make macbooks uh, amazon besides having the store they also have one of the biggest if not the biggest cloud provider in the world avs which simplifying it hosts a lot of the internet that you access day to day and you encounter on your computers on your phones everything that you load in terms of websites applications uh, is being hosted on their servers microsoft you know them they make windows the operating system that you have on your laptops on your pcs uh, they also have a gaming company xbox that competes with playstation uh, alphabet is actually google which i think everyone knows by now is the most popular search engine in the world and they are very good at doing that and they have branched off into other services that the whole world uses like google maps uh, youtube uh, gmail and so on and then last but not least facebook uh, which i think also owns instagram uh, their social media applications have become part of almost anyone's daily life and they have changed the way uh, that the community works and the relationship works and social works and yeah these tech companies and the tech sector has grown immensely over the past few decades and we don't think it's going to stop anytime soon uh, we think technology is becoming uh, more and more important in our lives in our jobs and in any of the areas that we have scaling back to cayman um, i know cayman enterprise city has been trying to attract more tech companies in the cayman islands uh, historically cayman islands has been a uh, base mostly for financial uh, banking and law institutions uh, i think over the past few years we've started to see some tech companies start to show up here and i think cayman enterprise city has a credit in that because they uh, made the platform where they make it easier for companies to relocate here and set up offices and that is actually how we came here in 2016 uh, still cayman is very early stage for tech com compared to financial and legal industries we think there's a lot more work to do and that work that should be done has two parts one of them is uh, organizations and the government and cayman enterprise city helping uh, bring companies here and the other is trying to educate the people on island and the students and the local talent into the tech uh, technology space as opposed to guiding them only to financial and legal industries um, over the past year as we all know uh, coronavirus happened and then almost everywhere uh, there has been a shutdown and quarantines 
that kind of changed the global uh, process for all the companies uh, because they had to allow employees to work from home. And uh, many of those companies, and especially the tech companies, have become more open to remote work as a long-term strategy. I know a lot of big tech companies in the USA have already announced since last year that uh, moving forward, they are okay with people working from home forever. Uh, we think that while the tech sector is still being developed here, this could be a good option for local students and people that are interested in working in tech uh, to start doing so uh, remotely. Because after COVID, now you can find a lot more jobs in tech for any skill level, for beginners or advanced, uh, from companies that allow you to work from wherever in the world. And why not work from K-Man and then yeah, once more tech companies are here, you can switch to physically. But I know there's already a program, program made by the government here where they allow people from outside Cayman to move here and just work here uh, remotely for their companies for up to two years. You guys are still here, so why not do the same? Uh, our company, yeah, as I said, it was founded in 2016. Uh, we own and operate many software applications around multiple platforms. Uh, desktop and mobile are the main ones. Uh, we are a global, are part of a global structure. So we have sister companies in the United States, in Romania, in Cyprus, and in China. Uh, I wanted to touch a bit about what we have been doing here in Cayman. So for any of the job openings that we had, and we have hired around 15 people since we moved here, uh, we've tried to find people that were on island for our needs also, like it was with Yasmani's case. Um, we only managed to hire locally one C++ software engineer, Yasmani, and one C Sharp software engineer that now is a technical manager. Uh, as a side story, we had difficulties finding people that wanted to come work uh, for us that were on island. Like we, we've had job listings for uh, some of these positions for, as I said, up to one year. And we couldn't find people that were interested to come work and learn. Uh, so we had to import from other countries and relocate them here. Uh, we're hoping this will change and we're trying to do some efforts in this sense as I will talk in a future slide. Talking about the company, I wanted to touch on this also because I think what differentiates tech companies to financial or law or any other sector that is here on island uh, is that they do a very good job of uh, one, providing opportunity for career growth. Uh, and the second one, they have very nice benefits and a nice work culture. So I just wanted to list what we benefit from here in 8 point, so that maybe you can compare to some of the other companies in finance or law. So we have the best health insurance that we could find on island when we set up an office here. We have unlimited vacation. Uh, our compensation is very competitive uh, and we have a very significant performance uh, tight bonus to it. Um, our work environment, I think Bianca has been in our office. Uh, we have open space, we have music most of the time, we have a ping pong table, we have games, gaming consoles, we have free food provided by the company every Monday and Wednesday. And outside of that, we always have a fridge that is full of snacks, beer, and drinks. Uh, so it's, it's a company that tries to make uh, work more pleasant. And uh, it's important that they keep this balance between work and fun. And this is something that is uh, very common to, throughout all the companies in tech. 
Um, what we do as a team, uh, it's actually funny that we do a Google Chrome based internet browser. Uh, and we have the main development team right here in this office in Cayman. Yes, money is part of that team. And we have another software engineer here. Um, it's very complex and it's a very big achievement that we were able to build it here thanks to Yasmani and the other developers. Uh, if you want to play with it, I left a link here. You can install it. We're trying to do something that is more simple to use than Google Chrome and allows you to better find what you're looking for. Okay, next, I think this will be of interest for uh, most of you, especially for students. Uh, how do we hire here in this company? Um, we already talked about how we hired Yasmani. Uh, simplifying it, we are always on the lookout for people that are problem solvers, that are eager to learn and are adaptable. We know and we understand that experience is difficult to come by and uh, we can prioritize people that just want to learn and are very eager to learn. Uh, we as a company, we plan on doing internships over the summer here at Eight Point to try to uh, get uh, the local people more familiar with how it is to work in a tech company and to try to give them, give them a perspective into what we do here every day. Um, let them know that it's not so difficult. You just have to start with something and then you can learn in time. Uh, we will announce this on our LinkedIn, LinkedIn page at one point. And we also wanted to let you know that me and Yasmani, uh, we want to help you. If you want to start working in tech, you can add us on LinkedIn. Uh, we can talk about what it is you want to do or give you more information. We can offer mentorship. We can help you with your resume and your LinkedIn review. I have a lot of experience on that because uh, I've interviewed a lot of people, uh, both here and in Romania. Uh, and we can also help you with GitHub. Once you start practicing coding, we can look over your code and give you help or hints to help you progress. Okay, uh, before we do the Q&A, just wanted to say that we added two slides at the end of the presentation. We will distribute the presentation and uh, you can have access to all of this. So what we included on these two pages is basically everything that we think you can find online right now and you need in order to start learning more about technology uh, and about technology jobs, uh, about software programming, about product management, doesn't matter. There's a lot of resources we put here that include uh, free courses that are online, video tutorials, and so on. Uh, we also included what we know uh, on island uh, might help you. There's a lot of uh, conference organizers on island that target tech subjects. And I think if you want to get started in this, it would be a very good exercise for you to participate in those because you get to know people and you get to know what they do and you get to make connections with them. We know there's also, we know there's two coding uh, academies. Code Cayman, I believe is the only one active now, but they do free courses for everyone that wants to learn how to code. Uh, we also included our LinkedIn profiles here. You can connect to us. Uh, and then, yeah, more things around how you can find jobs both on island or globally. Okay, so with that, then we can open it to questions. Yeah, thanks so much both of you. Um, so you have a question here. So what education and qualifications are required for someone in the field? 
Okay. So, yeah, I think that there's a lot of examples in the world where many people without higher education or without computer science education have ended up being multi-billion billionaires and leaders of big companies like Steve Jobs from Apple or Bill Gates. Um, from my experience, I did, uh, my university was computer science profile, but what I learned there, I would say didn't really influence my career path. Uh, I was already passionate about computers and internet and that's mainly the thing that pushed me forward through the career and not exactly the education. If you have the opportunity right now to select your education path, go towards something that is based on computer science or technology, uh, math, because yeah, it's not essential, but it doesn't hurt either. But if you don't have that option and you already did something that is not related to computer science, I think it is very easy to start uh, learning what is needed. I have a friend from Romania. He finished mechanical engineering and then five years into his career, he had a revelation that, okay, I'm doing good in this field. He got several promotions across time, but he didn't really get uh, any satisfaction from his career and he didn't have enough money compared to the other sectors of work. So what he did, he quit one day and he went and did a simple course on web development. And then in three months, he got a job as a web developer. And after six months, he was already getting paid more than he earned uh, in his previous position. And now he's a manager in that company after two years. Yeah, I think so the same. I think that computer science, software engineer is one of the opportunity that the only that you need to know is you need to be decided to learn, you need to have time. And also it's very nice because if you want to make a business, the only that you need to do is one computer. Again, your time and be able to do that business. So this is something that you can grow from scratch very fast in YouTube, you can, you, you need to set your path. For example, if you want to, if you like video games and you want to start video games, you can go to YouTube and start to see how the people do video games, start doing smart things. After one year or two years, if you are really working very hard doing video games, maybe you can get a good position. So it is not about what started when you, in one interview, few people are asking you, hey, what did you study? But your study didn't tell anything about you. In this country, the study say, oh, you parent a youth and you spend too much money in your education. But when you want, when you want to, you will be hired not for your study. You will be hired for the capability that you will have in the present solving problem. That that does depend on the study that depends in previous hard work passion and time doing computer science yeah i think it's more important to that idea the way you think yeah. and the way you approach learning and yeah because everything can be learned want to add to that um because i think what lorenzo and Ismani is what they're saying is really important um and a lot of um, what the in successful interns we've had in our Enterprise Cayman program is um, people that, so for example, Alyssa Ebanks, she interned with us last year um, with me in digital marketing. Her experience is in game design, so not directly correlated to digital marketing, but through the internship, she was still able to gain regular work experience. Um, and from that, it actually took her to networking with other companies within the zone. And she's now working in architectural drawings using virtual reality. So now she's able to showcase what she studied in university 
Um, and this was purely just through um, having an internship and getting that work experience. It connected her with other individuals and just gave her everyday, um, like every working um, nine to five and getting that sort of experience. So um, like Yasmani and Lorenzo said, it's not always what degree you have, it's also the experience that you are working towards and that could be through an internship, that could build through building your portfolio, mentorships and even attending these workshops uh, that connect Nova is hosting. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that. Also, I don't think I introduced myself. I'm the marketing manager at Cayman Enterprise City um, and I'm the one that connects all the interns to these special economic zone companies, just as an FYI. <laughs> Thanks, Bianca. Yeah, so Bianca is the one who runs all the internships at the CEC, Cayman Enterprise City. So if you are looking for an internship or work experience, she is the lady to go to. She's the one to speak to about all of that. Um, but we do have another question, actually. Um, someone said, I'm in my final year in computer science in the States, and I'm very passionate about programming. I was wondering, where should we go to, to apply at your company? Um, yeah, we have a website, 8point.ky, and we also have our LinkedIn page. Uh, I think Hannah provided our LinkedIn profiles. We can connect with us and we can chat about it. Well, yeah, congrats on your uh, education choice. Um, we have another one here as well. It says, I noticed that 8point you have C Sharp and C++ software engineers. My question is, what is the most widely used programming language or which language is on the rise? This one. Yeah, right now, right now, I don't know because I am not tracking the list of the use of promo languages. If I need, if I need to respond to this question, I see that now JavaScript is the language more used around the world, but it is not the most important. It's now that it is the most used because the web is growing very fast and everybody wants to do a business in the web. Everybody wants to go on internet and show what they are doing. One very nice language, I think that the maybe the best one that everybody is using right now is JavaScript. But there is, but in general, there is not the best language in the world. There is not the worst language in the world. Languages are different tools that depend on problems, depend on the problem that you want to solve. You need to see on internet history about the problem and get the language that is more useful for you. For example, if you want to resolve, if you want to do, to resolve, a, to resolve and show graphical equation because you are doing a class and you want to show graphical equation in the Blackboard. And after that, print the graphical equation and show you. There is already a language called in MATLAB. It's about math that he has everything or almost everything that you will need to that you will need to show a function. So you will not use JavaScript. You will use MATLAB because there are too many words with people before working in MATLAB about computer, about computers and math. So languages it depends about the problem that you want to solve. There is not the West, and there is not the worst. And also, I would like to add to that locally here, we have been keeping a close eye on what the demand is for software engineers in what languages. And here it's almost entirely C sharp and .NET, uh, all the job postings that we have been tracking for the past three, four years. Most of them are C sharp .NET. Uh, I think we were among the only exception that hired for C++. But yeah, globally, it's a different story. And I think you can use some of the links we posted at the end of the presentation uh, where you can see a lot of remote jobs and find out what's the most popular language that is being uh, needed now in those jobs. Yeah, and another point we wanted to make, I think I talked to Yasmani with this before the presentation is um, 
yeah, try to find something that is simple. JavaScript, for example, is easier than C++. Um, if you find demand for it, if you find jobs openings for beginners, start with that, try to learn the language. It will teach you how to think. And then at a later point, you can change the language because you can learn another language. The important thing is that you need to get some experience, start how to think, and then you can learn another language just like as Mari did and just like other developers in our companies did. It, they started with uh, one language and then they shifted to another one, depending on what we do in the company and what technologies we have to use. So just on that, would you suggest um, for you know a young individual to learn various different programs and not specifically specialize on just one right now to mm -hmm. broaden their scope? Um, I think it, it depends. That, that question is depend of the people. When you are growing, what happened to me? When I started to do computer science, that I went over the internet, there are too many languages. And my brain was fully done information. And I didn't know to make, oh, what is the language that I should learn? What happened? My, my thinking about that is that first, you need to get one computer language. Understand it fully as you can, deep, everything. When you feel that you are very good doing that program that you say, oh, I am the best in this, you can switch that over language. A um, few days ago, I saw, I see a conference about one man calling Uncle Bob. It is one of the most important people now talking about this. He has a book calling Clean Code. He told something that was very nice. How long? How long do you think that they to gain a new language with new thinking, with new, new idea? And he said that, I don't remember 30 years ago, didn't gain a new language completely differently. It is the same language, but the way that you have to express your knowledge is the different. At the same, the same meanings in each language, but you need to express with different words, but it's the, the same. Okay, great. We have another one here that says, I'm currently overseas studying information technology management for business. Um, I'm looking for summer internships, but would you be open to hiring remotely? Or are you looking for on-island students? Um, I think what we can do remotely is just mentor and offer help and support. I don't know yet how remote hire would work like in the current context we have most of our employees working from home across the world anyway so i think it's a possibility we just haven't thought about it yet so i would say in principle yeah we're open to it uh, you can ping us and we can talk more about it i think if you are really good doing the thing that you know to do no matter about remotely or from home if you are very good and you do one interview, thinking to get a position remotely, and the company didn't allow that, you can get that position. You, you need to show them that they need you. Definitely agree with that. <laughs> show that you want the position and definitely work hard for it. Um, we have one more question here that says, is collaborative programming used at a point? What are the different roles in a software development team? I can take this one. So yeah, everything is we do right here, right here in the company is collaborative, and that applies to programming as well. Uh, the different roles that we have in the software development team, uh, we try not to assign different roles. We try to get everyone on a level where they can back up each other. So this way, everyone has the opportunity to learn new, new things all the time. And we try to not define specific roles. Like you will only do or handle this part of the application, and you will only do this part of the code. We try to allow everyone to work on 
most of the things. And then, yeah, collaboration, like we're sitting next to each other, we talk all day, we discuss ideas, we have meetings and discuss, okay, what problems do we have now? What do we think we can do to solve them? Okay, someone has a good idea, we go with it, we test it, and yeah. I think if you are working in that point, your role depends on what, how can you improve our business? If you, for example, my role is a software engineer, but if I go with very nice idea for another team, maybe they can work in an idea. So I need to respond that question, how can I improve the business? If I do a response for that business, for that question, that the company maybe can go in that way I develop the what I mean. There is anything in this company that is, there is not a, the, the hierarchy that you know that you role is software engineer, you need to be charred and only do what you, the bosses need to tell you that you do. In my case, it's Laurentio. Work with Laurentio is very nice because I feel that I open to do whatever that I do if and I can improve what we already have. Yeah, and we try to encourage that. Like I would say the role is defined maybe by you not by us yeah. like we try to encourage people to grow and learn new things and have more impact in what we do in our company come up with ideas and we try to encourage that we don't do yeah very specific roles we don't do very specific tasks we are very open in that idea if you want to learn like we allow it and we try to help you as we know you will help the company in return and it's what we want. Great. I think this is one last question, if no one else has a question before we move on. But what is your stance on companies that take ownership of ideas or products created by its employees? Hmm. This seems like a political <laughs> question to me. Yeah, it's a difficult yeah. question. So I'm not sure if you want to take that one or we can pass it on know, to the I last one. I can just one. say that yeah, I haven't thought about it. I don't really have a stance. Like, usually, if you work for a company, everything you do and all the ideas that you come up with are belonging to that company. However, some companies like in tech, for example, I think this is more popular in tech. If you are a person that has many good ideas and you create interesting projects, you will also be rewarded for it. Like you will, your career will go up, uh, you will get more money for it because you will be noticed like in our company because we are very open to people having ideas and we encourage people to grow and learn new things. Uh, if you have ideas, it will be visible across almost the whole company. So people will know that you are having a positive impact and you will be rewarded for that. Like outside of that, I mean, yeah, in the end, uh, everyone has a choice to go and build their own companies and follow their dreams and uh, yeah, follow their ideas. And I think that's also something interesting, but what they don't say is that for any successful company that you see, there are thousands or maybe more of failed ones or failed ideas. So working for a company, maybe it's a good intermediate process that if you want to take that route, that will allow you to learn more and then try to apply it to do your own thing. Great, right. and just one last question before we pass it on to Bianca um, to talk about opportunities within the CEC is if you could give one piece of advice to an individual looking to get into the field, what would it be? Go first. No, I didn't understand. If you want to give one piece of advice, to someone that wants to get into this field. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Try to get in love and work too much. Yeah, you just need that. In everything. Love about the thing that you do always be positive and work hard to achieve whatever you want. In this science, if you I we think if you want to change the world, you should learn computer science. Be positive, work hard. Um, yeah, be happy. Anything. 
yeah. And what, what I would add is, yeah, technology is not going away. It's growing faster than anything else. The pay is better than anything else. The career opportunity is better than anything else. The work and life balance, the same. So yeah, just start simple. Just yeah. start dedicating time to it. And I think you'll find your passion. Great, thank you so much for that. So Bianca, do you wanna go ahead and chat more about the CEC as a whole and different opportunities and how individuals could get involved within the CEC? Yeah, uh, thank you, Hannah. Um, great presentation, Lorenzo and Yasmani. Um, so I'll just give you really quick, essentially how you could now get involved uh, within one of the special economic zone companies. Uh, we have our internship program, as you mentioned, this happens year round and applications are currently open. I do want to highlight that they do close April 1st, which is this Thursday. So if you haven't yet applied, do so before Thursday. Um, our current positions available, like um, 8 Point mentioned, is a great internship with 8 Point. It's one of the coolest offices I've been in. Uh, so definitely, if you want to um, get into their internship, apply soon. Um, we now have Brave Software. They're based off San Francisco, but are also located here in Cayman. And they're looking for three tech uh, professionals that are interested in software programming. Um, we then have Ogene, which is a company based out of Sydney, Australia, also located here. And they're looking for someone with interest in computer science and marketing. So we have lots of different um, positions available. Um, specifically in the tech sector. So if any of what I mentioned is of interest to apply to our internship program, um, we also do have a mentorship program. Um, same rules apply, except it's a bit more flexible um, and more chances to pair you up with our special economic zone company. All I'm saying, you could find it out on our website, which is enterprisekman.ky.